Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Creality Sonic Pad. As you may already know, most of our 3D printers use Marlin firmware. Marlin firmware was designed for 8-bit and 32-bit Arduino-based processors to run your 3D printer. The advantage is that almost every processor, even the AT Mega 2560 8-bit processor on the Prusa MK3S Plus, can work with Marlin pretty well. But the downside is the performance, especially the speed of your 3D printer, as it will be limited to the speed of the processor. Even an updated 32-bit processor that runs at over 100 megahertz is still very slow when compared to a smartphone processor that runs at 1 to 2 gigahertz with multiple cores. So, a common way to improve the speed and print quality of your 3D printer is to install Clipper. Two to three years ago, before the pandemic, everybody could easily get a Raspberry Pi for $50 or less, making it the perfect hardware to run Clipper with. Even a $35 Raspberry Pi 3 using a 1.2 GHz 64-bit processor was much faster compared to a 32-bit processor from 72 up to 168 MHz on a regular 3D printer. So, all the calculations are handled by the Raspberry Pi, and your old motherboard will just work as an adapter to control the stepper motors, heat cartridge, thermistor, and limit switches. Simple jobs that are more suitable for an Arduino board to handle. Besides the Raspberry Pi, you also need a touch screen to install the Clipper screen as the controller. As your 3D printer screen will no longer be useful, some people who don't want to buy another touch screen can just use a web interface so the 3D printer can operate without a screen. Unfortunately, under the current global chip shortage, you can no longer get a Raspberry Pi at a reasonable price unless you're willing to buy one for $150 to $200 from Sculpers, or if you have one, you can use an old laptop or PC and install Linux to run Clipper, but this is not an easy fix for everyone. So, this Sonic Pad will do the Raspberry Pi's job of running the Clipper firmware as well as working as an external touchscreen to control your printer. It has the latest Creality printer firmware pre-installed, including the Ender 3S1, S1 Pro, and the Ender 3 V2. I will test it on the latest Ender 3 S1 and Ender 3 V2 Neo, as well as an old stock Ender 3, and see if it is compatible with older printers. I would like to thank Creality for sending me the Sonic Pad to review, and with that, let's get started. First, I will set up the Sonic Pad on the Ender 3 S1. But before that, I would like to print a calibration cube and a 3D Benchy so we can see how the print quality changes when we print at higher speeds with Clipper. Okay, the calibration cube and the Benchy both look normal, and the Benchy is actually really nice. The calibration cube still has the same overshot corner issues as most 3D printers without tuning pressure advanced do. Let's see if we can improve this by using Clipper firmware. To get started with the Sonic Pad, we only have to connect one power cable, and we don't have to connect the printer or camera yet. Turn it on, select the language, agree with whatever it says, select your time zone, connect it to your Wi-Fi network, or plug in your Ethernet cable if you are using a wired network. I will leave the name as the default. Now, we have to select the model of the printer. I'm using an Ender 3 S1 with an STM32 F103 32-bit processor. So, I will select the F103 version. Next, it will copy a firmware file to our SD card. Remove the card from the printer and use the card reader to insert it into the USB port at the bottom left. Then, we can turn off the printer and put the SD card back in. Turn on the printer and it will upload the firmware to the printer. If the screen of your printer freezes like this, that's okay as you don't need the screen anymore. We can now connect the Sonic Pad to the printer using the USB cable. I will connect it to the top USB port at the back as the other one has a camera label. It will now check the firmware on your printer and if everything is fine, it will show a success message. Now we can start the self-test, starting with the hot end heatsink fan and followed by the part cooling fan. Then, it will home the printer and let you adjust the four corners of the bed. However, there is a glitch here. When I press the first point button, it moves to the front left, but the nozzle is actually a few millimeters away from the bed. I definitely don't want to have to raise my bed 5mm to touch the nozzle, or the springs will be way too loose and unable to maintain the level of the bed. 
So I will just skip to the next step. It homes the printer again and lets you set the Z offset. As you can see, the Z offset is currently positive 5 millimeters, which explains why the nozzle is also 5 millimeters away from the bed in the last step. I think this is a logical error. You should first set the Z offset, adjust the four corners, and then maybe reconfirm the Z offset. But anyways, I just moved the nozzle lower to slightly scratch the paper, just like how you would set the Z offset on a regular 3D printer. Okay, it's now going to do a 25 point probe. I will preheat the bed to 60 degrees Celsius first, and then start auto bed leveling. Now it shows everything is done and displays the main clipper screen. Select manual leveling to redo the leveling of the four corners that was skipped during the setup process. After auto home, when I click on the first point, it will move to the front left corner like before, but this time since the Z offset is set, the nozzle is no longer a few millimeters above the bed. I will just relevel the bed and readjust the Z offset. Next, I will try to connect a webcam to the second USB port at the back. I am using a Logitech C920 webcam and it has no response, so I'll try restarting the sonic pad. Okay, it is working after restarting. Next, we will calibrate the input shaping. We need to mount the G sensor that comes with the sonic pad on the print head. Creality actually has two files inside the USB drive that let you print a mount to mount the G sensor on the print head, but I will just use the CR Touch mount. Connect the sensor cable to the back of the sonic pad, go to configure, other settings, advanced options, and select measure resonances. The sensor status is on, so we can now start the test. As you can see, the x-axis is moving at different speeds, and the sensor will store the vibrations to calculate how to compensate for it during printing. After that, the y-axis, which is the print bed on this Cartesian printer, will do the same. Some people may argue that putting the sensor on the print head may not be able to accurately measure the vibrations from the print bed, but let's just let the test finish, and I will show you how to manually measure the y-axis later. Okay, the test is now done. We can save the values and let the system restart. To manually measure the y-axis, we need to use the console and the web interface. Go to Network Settings, Wireless Network, and you will see the IP address of the sonic pad here. I will now remove the sensor from the print head, tighten the CR touch screw, and then put the sensor on the print bed and secure it using a large binder clip. I will use the browser to open the IP address of the sonic pad, home the printer again, go to the console, and enter the command shaper calibrate axis equals y. It will now redo the y axis shaper calibration. As you can see, the CR touch pin is also shaking, so I guess it may also work if you put the sensor on the print head to measure the vibrations of the print bed, but putting the sensor on the bed still sounds more reasonable to me. After a few minutes, it's done, and we can send the save config command to save the values and restart the system. I will try to print a calibration cube without calibrating pressure advance and see how it looks. This cube is printing at 120 millimeters per second, and it took 23 minutes. The layers of the stock 31 minute cube look better, but the overshoot corners are not that obvious on this 23 minute cube. Let's see if we can improve it by calibrating the pressure advance. As there is no option on the touchscreen to do this, we need to follow the clipper documentation. First, we have to send two commands to the console. The first command is to set a slower acceleration on the square corners. For the second command, as the Ender 3S1 is using a direct drive, we will copy this line. After that, we can download and print this STL file to start the test. As you can see at the bottom, we have some overshoot corners of the cube printed by the stock firmware. In the middle, we have the right amount of filament extruded, and the corner in this area is what we want. So, the height with the ideal corners is between 10 to 15 millimeters. According to the calculations on Clipper's documentation, we can just use the number multiplied by 0.02 to find the pressure advance value. For 15 millimeters, it would be 0.3. But based on my previous experience, most direct drive extruders should be somewhere around 0.25, so I will try 0.28 first. Just open the printer.cfg file, go to the extruder section, type pressure advance, and set it to 0.28. We can now save the file, restart the system, and reprint the calibration cube.
obviously 0.28 is too much. The overshooted corners have become undershoot. In this case, I will set it to 0225 and try again. This time it's pretty close to what I expected, and it looks good on the X, Y, and Z surfaces. Let's do a comparison to the one printed by stock firmware, the one printed by clipper firmware with that pressure advance, the one with 0.28 pressure advance, and finally, the 0.225 pressure advance. Of course, you can spend more time on it to make it even better, but I just want to show you how it works, so I will stick with 0.225. Next, I will print some benches, starting with 120mm per second and 1500mm per second square acceleration. It took 1 hour and 12 minutes to finish. When comparing it to the stock 1 hour 51 minute benchy, it still looks pretty nice and there is no obvious quality loss when printing at this speed. I then printed a few more benchies with different speeds and accelerations. As you can see, there are some cooling issues when printing at 160 mm per second with 2500 mm per second square acceleration and it gets even worse if I push it faster. The top of the print is also not very nice compared to the other three, so I would say the maximum speed you can get from the stock under 3S1 is around 120 to 160 millimeters per second with 1,500 to 2,500 acceleration if you want to still have a presentable print quality. Besides the Ender 3S1, I also tried to use the Sonic Pad on the Ender 3. Since my Ender 3 is using a 32-bit board, it should be the same as the Ender 3 V2 V4.2.2 motherboard. I just selected the V2 profile, and it works well. I printed four benchies. The first one is a 1 hour 51 minute benchy using the stock setup at 50 mm per second and 500 mm per second square acceleration, followed by a 1 hour 20 minute benchy at 120 mm per second with 1500 acceleration. Then the 55 minute benchy at 160 mm per second with 2500 acceleration. And finally, the 41 minute benchy at 250 mm per second with 2500 acceleration. I think the fastest you can print with reasonable print quality on the Ender 3 is around 100 to 120 mm per second with 1500 acceleration. However, when I tried doing the same on the Ender 3 V2 Neo, I expected the result to be somewhere between the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 S1, but the result was surprising. For the stock setup, it prints better than the Ender 3 and is pretty close to the Ender 3 S1. However, when working with the Sonic Pad to print at a high speed, it does not print as well as the Ender 3, mainly because of the cooling. The cooling system on the V2 Neo starts to show cooling issues even when printing at 120 mm per second with 1500 acceleration, so the fastest you can print with the V2 Neo would be around 80 to 100 mm per second with 1500 acceleration, which is not as good as the Ender 3. Okay, after doing quite a lot of tests on different printers, let's talk about what I think of this Sonic Pad. 1. The Hardware the speed of the processor is unknown. They call it the Creality T800, and I'd assume it's a 64-bit Cortex-A53 or a similar processor. The onboard memory is 2GB, which is good enough to run Linux and Clipper. The loading speed of the web interface is normal, and the 7-inch touchscreen works okay. There is no obvious delay when switching between menus, and the $160 price is reasonable. 2. The setup and calibration. Setting up the Sonic Pad with your existing 3D printers is easy. It just takes a few clicks on the screen, exporting the printer firmware, and uploading it to the printer. The process should take less than 10 minutes, but you may need another 10 minutes to relevel your bed and set the Z offset. One glitch I found during this process is when it asks you to level the four corners of the bed, the nozzle is 5mm above the print bed, so there is no way to level the corners before the Z offset is set properly. However, the Z offset is the following step, so unless your printer was already in use before and the four corners were already leveled, this step could be quite frustrating. Calibrating input shaping takes less than 10 minutes, but it would take a while if you use the 3D model from Clipper to calibrate pressure advance. You can always start with around 0.25 and print a calibration cube to see if the corners are overshot or undershot to adjust the value. Three. For the slicer profile, if you use the latest version of Cura 5.1 like me, 
you have to add a FFF printer manually, type in the custom start and NG code, and import the print profiles provided by Creality. If you want to send the print job directly to the Sonic Pad, you need to install the Moonraker connection plugin from the Marketplace, which is similar to the Octoprint plugin. The thumbnail preview image can be generated from Cura and exported in the Ultimaker UFP file format, then uploaded to the Sonic Pad instead of using the standard G-code format. You can also use the latest Creality print slicer, as it includes the print profile for the Sonic Pad. You can also customize the print profile by going to expert mode and editing the speed and acceleration like you would in Cura. But I can't find any place to upload the print directly to Sonic Pad using Creality Print. It has to be uploaded to Creality Cloud, and you have to then use the Sonic Pad to access the cloud to print the file. Personally, I do not think it is as convenient as the Cura Moonraker plugin. 4. The speed and print quality. As the Sonic Pad runs Clipper firmware, it improves the print speed by quite a lot. However, it is still limited by our printer's hardware, considering that I got different results from the Ender 3, Ender 3 V2 Neo, and the Ender 3 S1. The Ender 3 S1 works better than the Ender 3 and Ender 3 V2 Neo, but it is still a bed slinger with the rubber wheel motion system, so around 160mm per second is about the best it can do. The Ender 3 V2 Neo prints better than the Ender 3 when using the stock firmware and prints at 50mm per second. Surprisingly, the Ender 3 actually works slightly better than the Ender 3 V2 Neo when printing at higher speeds, but both of them can still print at 80 to 120mm per second with acceptable print quality. In conclusion, integrating the single board computer and touchscreen in one single tablet at a reasonable price to run Clipper is much easier and cheaper than getting a Raspberry Pi and an external touchscreen. The installation of Clipper firmware on supported printers is quite easy even for beginners, but it still has some missing features like calibrating the input shaper from the print bed and pressure advance, which you need to do using the WebUI console. For the software, the web UI and screen UI is a standard fluid and clipper screen. Creality just added a cloud button inside the print menu, so if you like using Creality Cloud, you have an extra option to print, but if you don't, you can just leave it. Finally, I do want to suggest some improvements. First, I would like to see more printer profiles, like a full lineup of Creality's printers, as well as enabling the user to build custom firmware to work with other 3D printers. Second, as the Raspberry Pi with Clipper can do multiple printer control, I believe the Sonic Pad should also be able to control more than one printer at the same time. Let's see what features they will add by releasing new firmware in the future. If you are interested in the Sonic Pad, I put the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and click the notification bell to receive new video updates. I will see you next time.